4.30. This is WKYT this morning. The Indiana primary shook things up in the Republican race for president. But I have those results and more on the Kentucky primary that's coming up. First thing here on WKYT this morning. A man has died after a motorcycle crash in Lexington. Police are looking into what caused the crash. We'll have more details coming up. And Lexington police have given this year's annual Citizen Courage Medal to a 10-year-old boy. More on the boy who was honored this morning on WKYT. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you and welcome in to the first edition of WKYT <laughs> This Morning. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Michelle <laughs> Chamberlain. It's May 4th. It right? is. And it doesn't really feel like May 4th. Really, I mean, it's, it's really rather chilly out there this morning, uh, really. And it looks like we're uh, set with that for a few days, heading into the Kentucky Derby. Meteorologist Micah Harris is here with us. Good morning. Hey, good morning. It is a little chilly outside this morning. You know what? It gets even colder tomorrow morning. But you know what? We're just going to go one day at a time. There's Defender Radar Network. It uh, looks pretty clean sweet there early this morning. But let me tell you, by the afternoon, it's going to be totally different. We're at 49 degrees now in Lexington. 40s northbound. Central and northern zones, uh, we're sitting there in the 40s. But south, we're still in the 50s. But I believe most of us finish off right there in the upper 40s, lower 50s. Gusty rain today. It moves in later on this afternoon. I'm going to go over that timing. Obviously, I'm going to break it down for you when you can expect this coming up. Okay, see you then. Let's get to the news. It makes for an interesting turn of events in the Republican race for president. Ted Cruz has announced he's dropping out of the race. It came after Donald Trump won the Indiana primary last night. Democrat Bernie Sanders earned a win there, too. Weiju Jang has the breaking details this morning. CBS News projects Donald Trump won the Indiana Republican primary. The chairman of the Republican National Committee said Trump will be the presumptive nominee and called on the party to unite behind him. We're going after Hillary Clinton. She will not be a great president. She will not be a good president. She will be a poor president. For Ted Cruz, the loss in Indiana was one too many. Cruz suspended his campaign. From the beginning, I've said that I would continue on as long as there was a viable path to victory. Tonight, I'm sorry to say, it appears that path has been foreclosed. Trump had kind words for the rival he called Lion Ted. He is one hell of a competitor. He is a tough, smart guy. And he has got an amazing future. Ohio Governor John Kasich came in a distant third here, but his campaign says he's staying in the race. In the Democratic primary, Bernie Sanders upset frontrunner Hillary Clinton. Clinton is looking ahead to the general election, asking for donations to help defeat Trump. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, Indianapolis. And Bernie Sanders spoke to a large crowd in Louisville just before the Indiana primary results were announced. Sanders was in Louisville campaigning for Kentucky's primary, which is now less than two weeks away. Garrett Weimer has more on what Sanders told voters. Many lined up early for a good spot to see Senator Sanders. I really want to meet him. I'm trying my best to meet Bernie Sanders, and I want to get a selfie with him. <laughs> and they didn't shy away from showing they feel the burn. We got the pin going. We have Bernie feel the burn and the flag. So, <laughs> Senator Bernie Sanders. Sanders finally took the stage around 7:30. Sanders spoke for nearly an hour covering topics ranging from the economy to health care to immigration and yes to Donald Trump. The American people will not elect a candidate who insults every group that you can think of virtually every day. Sanders says his campaign is about starting a political revolution and fixing what he calls a rigged economy during a push for immigration reform that includes a path to citizenship. There are 11 million undocumented people in this country, and I have talked. I have talked to many of them. All right, there's one right here. Two men who claim to be undocumented immigrants came down from their spot in the risers behind Sanders and joined him at the podium for a hug. Sanders closed by urging Kentuckians to vote for him on May 17th. In Louisville, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. 
Now, Sanders is scheduled to hold a rally in Lexington this evening at Heritage Hall. The doors will open for that at 4 o'clock. Former President Bill Clinton has been campaigning for his wife, Hillary, across Kentucky. Yeah, he started the day yesterday with a rally at Moorhead State University before making stops in Lexington and Louisville. Now, in Lexington, he spoke at a rally on the University of Kentucky campus. He said if elected, Hillary Clinton would help make student loans more affordable. Pay it out over 20 years at a fixed income, never more, no matter how much you borrowed, than 10% of your after tax income. Now, think what this means. This would mean everybody could move out of their parents' house. While on the UK campus, former President Clinton took a tour of the UK basketball locker room and he met with Coach Cal, who posted this picture on his Facebook page. All right, a lot of uh, talk about that. In news since that last night, the motorcyclist who was seriously injured in a Lexington motorcycle crash has died. The crash happened just before 10 o'clock last night along South Upper Street near Limestone. Police say the person on the motorcycle was taken to the hospital where he later died. Police have not given us the name of the motorcyclist at this point. Part of Upper Street was closed but has since reopened, and a reconstruction team is looking into what caused the crash. And not far from the scene of the crash, UK police issued an alert about an armed robbery that happened near Memorial Hall just before 11. We're working to gather some more details on that this morning. Investigators are still trying to figure out what caused a fire that destroyed a large Scott County home. That fire started yesterday morning in a home on Browns Mill Road. Firefighters say there wasn't much they could do to save the home. No one was injured in the fire, but fire officials say the fire killed a dog. Investigators say they are also looking into whether this fire is connected to three others that happened in the last week. The other house's fires occurred in Jesmond and Garrett counties. Police say those three cases are arson. A former Franklin County constable has been indicted in connection to a prostitution ring. Investigators say Thomas Banta was running the operation out of his home and his private security business in Frankfurt. They say men would pay Banta to have sex with women. He is indicted for promoting prostitution, kidnapping, and impersonating a police officer. Police say Banta and one of his employees, Dre Valentine, also posed as police and interrogated a 17-year-old for hours after claiming he stole a safe. Banta is in jail. Police are still looking for Valentine. Newly released court records claim former state personnel secretary Tim Longmire arranged for illegal campaign donations to be made to two Democrats in last year's election. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, the donations were made to Andy Bashir, who was elected attorney general, and Jack Conway, who lost the governor's race. Investigators say the money came from a kickback scheme that Longmire was involved in. But the FBI says there's no evidence showing that Bashir and Conway knew the donations were illegal. Longmire pled guilty to bribery last month and will be sentenced in August. Rapper 50 Cent has apologized for mocking a worker at the Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport. In a video that went viral, the rapper accuses the worker, Andrew Farrell, of being high on drugs. But Farrell's family says he is dealing with autism and social anxiety. In a letter sent to the family last night, 50 Cent said the incident stemmed from, quote, an unfortunate misunderstanding. He also asked the family to accept his apology. The family released a statement last night saying they would do just that. Well, he was badly injured in a shooting last year, but since then, the 10 year old boy has come a long way in his recovery. Family members say Antonio Reese still suffers from some complications, but last night he received the Citizen Courage Medal from Lexington Police. WKYT's Monique Blair has more on the award. After he was shot in the head last year while riding in his family's SUV, then only nine years old, Antonio Reese didn't give up. Antonio was in a coma for 18 days, and he truly had to fight to come out of that coma because without fighting and the power inside of him, he wouldn't be here anymore. Antonio has undergone five brain surgeries, and he had to relearn everyday tasks that many people may take for granted. But through it all, he persevered and stayed strong, earning him this Courage and Bravery Award. The high honor presented at the annual Lexington Police Department Awards Banquet is reserved for one exceptional person who has inspired others by demonstrating extraordinary strength and courage. After Antonio received his award, he was welcomed as everyone in the audience stood to their feet. It was a moment that brought many people in the audience, Antonio's family, and even Antonio. To 
14 months have passed since Antonio and his family's lives were changed forever. But his mom tells me they focus on the good that has come from this tragic situation. Grateful for the Lexington Police Department. They get a lot of cases throughout the year, but for them to truly adore and love my son enough to give him this award means more to us than anything, truly. In Lexington, and I give up and keep fighting. Monique Blair, WKYT. What an inspiring young man, and people in the community have raised enough money so that Antonio will soon be able to get a service dog. Great story, huh? Five brain surgeries. Yeah, what a strong amazing. kid. Time this morning is 4.40, 20 before 5, and WKYT this morning is just getting started. Yeah, about 15 million Americans suffer from food allergies, and even if you don't have allergies, it is important to be thoughtful about those who do. Moms Every Day has some tips when we come back. Pretty dry this morning, but I will tell you this, we jump off into the afternoon. Here come some gusty showers that will usher in some much cooler temperatures. We'll have that coming up next. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Pretty calm and quiet this morning, but it is a little bit cool outside as you walk out the door. It's all about the temperatures as opposed to anything falling out of the sky. Now, as we get toward the afternoon, that's going to be a little bit of a different story. You'll have some gusty showers and a few rumbles of thunder in the forecast, and you can see that to the north of us. Going to be making its way through later on today. The front is still north. The coldest air is still north, but it's heading our direction. There's no doubt about that. And we'll see this piece of energy later on this afternoon and off into the evening. That is your best bet. I'd say around noontime is when it starts to move in the far northwestern zones, and then it slides south and southeast as we go through time. Temperatures are in the 40s and 50s, kind of depends on where you live. But nonetheless, I mean, if you're at 51 degrees, that's still on the cool side of things. Uh, and 49 is too. So 49, 51, it's going to feel the same as you step out the door. But let me tell you this, we get into the afternoon, it's not going to rise that much more. We're talking about 50, upper 50s, lower 60s today. So it's going to be a bit chilly as we travel through the afternoon and off into the evening hours. Due to the fact, here comes that front, showers, thunderstorms roll on in. None of this looks like severe weather whatsoever, but that gusty wind will pump in that cooler air. And so 50s, remember yesterday, in some spots, we actually stayed in the upper 50s, but 50s yesterday uh, with cloudy skies, it was a little bit on the cool side as you walked out the door during the afternoon. But now throw in some rain, now throw in some gusty winds. It's not going to feel great. We head off into the night, slowly fades away just a bit. But those temperatures will really take a dive. We're starting to look for those rain chances just to continue today, continue for tomorrow. We'll take a break later on in this work week. But before that, we're going to see some possible 30s ahead. I would say tomorrow morning, there will be a couple spots in the upper 30s. Most of us will be there in the lower 40s. But a couple spots, yeah, right there around 38, 39 degrees. Not seeing a frost issue, definitely no freeze issue. And as we slide off towards your Friday and Saturday, Friday looks better. But let me tell you, Saturday, and we talked about this yesterday, Saturday still watching that rain chance late in the day. Could we see a small chance of rain in the forecast? Well, we have it in there today. Remember, yesterday it was at 20%. We only bumped it up 10%, but it's just put in there just to say we're seeing a trend that this is increasing from Sunday to actually Saturday. However, it's 30%. That is nothing to cancel any plans over. So it's all in all, still Friday and Saturday look like pretty good days. Upper 60s, lower 70s. It'll feel pretty nice, and most of us will yeah. stay dry. So it's we'll still have out. good derby parties. Yeah, it'll, it'll work <laughs> yes. out for us. As long as you don't get all 30% on you. <laughs> right. <laughs> then it's not a fun party. <laughs> all right, Micah, thank you very yeah. much. It is uh, 447 here in just a couple of seconds. With food allergies on the rise, more kids from preschool to college have diet restrictions to have to deal with. Yeah, in today's Mom's Everyday Minute, some ideas to consider if you're preparing snacks for the class. Hi, today we're with Tara Verma, blogger at Yummy Sprout and Madison Mom's blog. And many, many children today have food allergies or intolerances, and we should be aware of it, all of us. Yes, yes. Chances are, if your child's in preschool or school, they will run into a classmate at some point that has a food allergy. Um, the top eight food allergies are wheat, soy, milk, eggs, tree nuts, peanuts, fish, and shellfish. 
Um, so those are the most common, but some kids might have other allergies as sure. well. Um, thoughtfulness around the idea is ask the teachers, find out if there is an allergy in the class. If you're going to bring in a treat or something for the other kids to have, um, either making a recipe that's safe for them, and you can find some on my website, or bringing in oranges or cheese sticks if there's not a dairy allergy. Um, that child with the allergy, that thoughtfulness will go a very long way. They will feel included, um, and it'll just be a great thing to do. Absolutely. Great ideas. And for more ideas, check out MomsEveryDay.com. For these tips and more, just go to WKYT.com and click on Moms Every Day. All the latest news and your weather right there as well. And it's great to have you with us bright and early on WKYT this morning here on your Wednesday, 448 right now. It's a hugely popular show and WKYT has the behind the scenes look for you. We'll give you an all access pass to the crime drama NCIS New Orleans when we come back. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT this morning. Good morning on your Wednesday. Welcome back into WKYT this morning. Our time 4:51 right now. Detroit teachers are heading back to work today. Teachers called out sick the past two days after the district said it couldn't pay them in the summer if the state didn't provide more emergency funding. Today they're going to go back after receiving reassurances from the district's management. That they will be paid. New this morning, Lexington police have arrested a man suspected in two home invasions. Police say 27 year old Bobby Presley broke into two separate apartments on Camelot Drive yesterday. They say when officers arrived at the scene, Presley ran. Officers arrested him, but while in custody, police say Presley kicked out the right rear window of a police cruiser. Presley is charged with two counts of burglary, fleeing from police, and criminal mischief. He will go before a judge today. Also new this morning, an eastern Kentucky teenager is recovering after being badly injured in a crash. Police say 16-year-old Kaylee Smith lost control of her car and hit a utility pole in Knott County on Saturday. Friends say she was on her way to get her hair done for prom. Kaylee is a student at Knott Central High School. Her friends say they're doing what they can to support her. This year we really like got close and she just meant so much to me. I mean anytime I was down you could just look at her and she'd give you a funny face or something and she'd just bring you up. Callie is at UK Hospital. Friends say that she has been taken off of a ventilator and has so shown some signs of improvement. And hope that uh, continues. Well, murder, the U.S. Navy, and the Big Easy. You put all that together and you get the hugely popular show that is NCIS New Orleans, which you can watch right here on WKYT every Tuesday night. So recently we were invited for a behind-the-scenes look at the show. The crime drama follows naval criminal investigators working on military crimes, and it's shot entirely on location in New Orleans. The show's actors say they love that they get to show off such an incredible city, but to do so, they put in long hours. It takes eight days of 12 to 15 hour shifts just to shoot one episode, but they say it's well worth it. The people here are fantastic. We're very well received and, and uh, uh, loved around the city from the locals, and then we have all the tourists come in and they all watch the show. So being on a popular show like this, it's, uh, we get a lot of attention wherever we go. The cast and the crew won't have much downtime once the show wraps up this season. NCIS New Orleans has already been picked up for a third season. Shooting for it should start in July. You can see the full behind the scenes look at our website, WKYT.com, or you can get it on our app. A lot of folks uh, certainly enjoy watching that. Yes, they do. And our time this morning is 4.54, 6 now before 5 o'clock. And coming up, we'll have a look at some of the stories our news team is working on for you this morning. We'll have another look at your morning forecast. That's next. Good morning and welcome back. I'm meteorologist Micah Harris. We are in the 40s and 50s outside early this morning. It's pretty chill to start. We're at 47 right now in Lexington. Now, as we go through your day, we'll get out of that dry pattern early this morning, get into the afternoon, and we're looking for showers and thunderstorms. Very gusty rain sliding on in. It's going to usher in that cold air. And I'm going to show you how low we go with those temperatures coming up with another two hours of WKYT News. We'll see you right back here in just a couple of minutes.